45 miles an hour is the claim top speed. Still picking up speed though, dude. Holy crap, man. We are freaking flying. 40. Then it runs on a 60 volt battery with a 50 amp controller. This electric bike is called the Billy Go, and it might just be the greatest of all time. Current MSRP is around 2,500 bucks, but you can get a significant discount on that in the link below this video. But don't buy the Billy Goat just yet. We need to crack this thing open, take a closer look at it. We're gonna find out if this thing is actually the goat. And check it out. Team Pedals indicates that this bike will come with pedals. There is an option to get this bike with no pedals. And in my opinion, this is gonna be a revolutionary bike for this year. Comes with some sort of heavy bag. Wonder what's in there. Actually, I'm more excited what's in here. And this is a single motor e-bike rolling on 20 inch mag wheels. And no, they are not four inches wide. They're actually 4.5 inch tires with a tread pattern that's optimized for street riding. Kind of refreshing after all the knobby tires I reviewed last year. Brake rotors are massive at 203 millimeters. Seems suitable considering the speeds this bike claims. We'll find out how they work. Comes with another box. Well, let's take a look at this bike. Here's what it looks like when you get out of the box. And here's a first peek at the rear hub motor. At first glance, it appears to be a direct drive hub motor. Generally, these are good for running high speed. It is rated for 60 volts and 2000 watts continuous power. Website claims it can do 2600 watts peak. I get the feeling it's actually gonna be able to do more than that. However, we shall find out soon. It is full suspension with a dual crown front fork and a coil rear shock. It's actually a fast ace rear monoshock. It's got adjustments for compression and also adjustable rebound. Got a little goat right here. See what kind of seat we're gonna be rolling on. Looks pretty fancy. Feels soft. Should be good in unison with that mono shot. Time shall tell. Love the color. Wonder what these are for. And this, Billy Goat. It's always good to see a derailleur guard. In case you knock the bike over to protect your Shimano derailleur. And it looks like we're working with seven gears on a Shimano gear set. But we gotta take a look at this battery. This is the heart of the system right here, boys and girls. Goat bikes. Boom, 60 volts, 20 amp hours, 1200 watt hours of energy. This thing should make for a thrilling ride. Let's check out what's in this briefcase they send. Nicely packaged stuff. This is what we need to see. All right, power. It is a three amp charger. So a 20 amp hour battery pack divided by three. So about six and a half hours to charge from completely empty to completely full. What is in this one? Is that passenger foot pegs? Nice. Pedal, since I did get the pedal version of this bike, and it appears to be a lock. I think that's to be stored here. We'll see. And of course, our manuals. Check out the dual crown fork. Cold stanchions. Goat. On the right shoulder, we have an adjustment for compression with micro adjustments. Preload can be found on the left shoulder. Huge six millimeter bolts to clamp those bicycle handlebars down. Which, speaking of handlebars, let's take a look at them. Got a nice rise. Wrong lung hydraulic brake levers seem fine. And on the right, we have a full twist throttle. Looks like some sort of ignition. Seven speed Shimano gears. We'll get this display powered up soon. Left side has power button, pedal assist controls, lights, turn signals, horn, hazard lights. Is that what that is? Sweet. Also comes with mirrors, turn signals, headlight, and of course an axle. So we can throw this front wheel on there. Show you the brake calipers. Fenders are plastic. Here's a look at the brake calipers. R4 by Rungglen. Pronglen. One of those. Brake rotor on the rear is also massive at 203 millimeter. Dang, I actually think that looks good with no front fender. But let's throw it on there. Starting to come together now. Turn signals on, headlight on, pedals on. And a quick peek at this mono shock from the other side. Shows it is a BDA 53RC. We'll feel it out here soon. But I think it's about time to pop the battery on the Billy Goat. Fire this thing up. This thing comes with all the keys. Looks like that one goes in there, turns on. See what happens if we don't turn the key and try and turn it on. Looks like it will not power up. Put that key, boom, goat. Right away, looks like the hazard lights are going crazy. Hazard lights are currently in the on position. So we are working with a color display. Shows us our battery percentage up here, 71%. Average speed, 55.9 miles an hour, huh? Let's go ahead and tap through our options here. Uh, nothing's happening. Miles per hour, front and center, pedal assist. So we can adjust our pedal assist here. Looks like there are five levels and it changes the color as we go through. Green is zero and one, blue, red. Wonder what the horn sounds like let's try it <laughs> so there are turn signals on the rear uh, it looks like it's just lighting up and then there's a brake light when I pull the brake lever it lights up let's flip the headlights on turning the headlight on actually does not light up the rear light just the brake lever oh actually what we probably need to do is hold the plus button oh yeah there it goes so that turns on the light and then we still get a brake light as well so to give you an idea of the size here's what a six foot five dude looks like getting on this bike I can tell this thing's gonna be fun Oh, yeah. 
Got that full twist throttle. Play the suspension just a bit here. And here's what my pedal strip would look like with an inseam of 34. Uh, let's be honest, this is gonna be a motorcycle. Brake setup is, back brake is on the left, which is motorcycle setup. And there are brake cutoff sensors. Oh, I'm getting antsy. Antsy for what? Try it out. Oh. Get outside and ride this thing. It's got 60 volts, 50 amp control. Seat is a little bit firm, but it's fine. Especially with that rear suspension. These tires feel sticky. So it's got turn signals and you can adjust the headlights. You can turn them off. Oh shoot, that was the wrong button. You can turn them off like that. Damn, that bike looks good. I know, right? Oh. <laughs> oh, we gotta get some air in those tires. The Billy Goat! So the entire weight of the bike is listed at uh, just over 100 pounds. Definitely tell it's got a little bit of weight to it, but it's really not horrible. So let's give it a little bit of deuce. That one says five. A little bit nervous. Go! Oh, 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 oh. oh my goodness. That literally feel windy. Ready, go! 51.5 miles an hour. Is this real life? So at first glance, it doesn't appear to show us our power output. I wonder if we can get in the settings. Oh yeah, there's settings here. Speed limit, 100. <laughs> That'll do it. It's like they're, oh, boost drive. I wonder what that is. Might have to try some of this stuff out later. Start strength. Three! We'll leave it on three for now. Check it out later. Cruise set. We'll leave it as is. Bluetooth! So, we'll play some of the settings while we're out. Before we get out on the road, let's check out how this lock works. I feel like I'm loading up a sword or something. It just feels cool, man. Dude, that is like the most convenient lock ever. Then the passenger pegs would go right down here in this slot. Probably put those on later. Here's the mirrors. Oh, this is kind of a cool effect. You see those little red circles on the ground. It actually casts like a red light on the ground from the bottom side of the turn signals. A little quirking feature for you. All right, dude, let's take the Billy Goat 60 volt out for a ride. Of course, we're gonna bring the manual so we can play with the settings a little bit. However, one thing we are not gonna bring is the mirrors. I did not install them. It would be pretty cool though. And the passenger pegs would go right here, but I'm not bringing a passenger today, so I'm not putting them on. And real quick, just to show you how this lock works, it goes right on through there and it locks onto the other side here and basically prevents somebody from rolling off with your bike. Of course, you got the key too. Tires are set to 25 PSI, so let's fire up the Strava, see what kind of range we get. Goat bikes. Oh, and real quick, I can see the controller down there. I'll show you on my phone. It is indeed a 50 amp controller. So without further ado, let's roll. Turning the headlight on will adjust the brightness of the display. And of course, the very first test we're gonna do on this bike is the 20% grade. This is a gearless hub motor, direct drive. So let's crank it on up to pedal assist five and just full throttle it and see. How it does. Generally, these are not great hill climbers, but this is crushing it. Wow, I was actually thinking it might not actually climb up there because gearless hub motors generally are not great for torque, but this thing is listed as 110 newton meters of torque and I can feel it right away. And I've been actually only setting three out of five for launch mode. We'll get in there and tune it up a bit later. So before we get out here and do anything too crazy, let's start out here on pedal assist zero. We get no power assist at all, obviously. So let's put it on pedal assist one, use the throttle to get rolling here and it gives us a fraction of the power. Unfortunately, we do not get any sort of wattage output displayed here. So we don't know how much power we're actually getting. I can tell you that was about 200 watts maybe. So if you don't wanna go crazy on this thing, you don't have to. Let's go ahead, crank it on down to gear number seven here. This is a cadence sensor and it'll take us up to about seven miles an hour while it'll cut us off on pedal assist one. Let's pump it on pedal assist two. Holy crap, dude. I can already feel that gave me a pretty significant boost in power and we are on Gear number seven. This will probably be about the last I'm pedaling this bike today, honestly. This is going to be one of those electric bicycles. That's more of an electric motorcycle than electric bicycle. Full suspension is adjustable. I'm not sure what I have the settings on right now, but it's feeling nice. It is a fast ace mono shock with a coil on there. I can tell it's actually set up for, for a dude with a little bit of weight, which I appreciate as a 200 pound dude. Four piston hydraulic brakes are feeling great right off the start. Holy crap, dude. You can pick one of these things up for under two grand right now. So on pedal 
notice this too, you can full throttle it with a full twist throttle and it will cut you off at about 17 miles an hour. Same goes if you're actually pedaling it. And under full throttle, let's go ahead and press pedal assist three. Yep, definitely feel a little kick up in power there, bringing us up to 27 miles an hour already on pedal assist three. I'm gonna go ahead and test out the polarized sunglasses. Can you see that display through the polarized lenses? Heck yeah, you can, that's awesome, man. I hate those displays you can't see when you put on polarized sunglasses. I know, it's a minor little thing. So do remember, we are running on a motorcycle setup for brakes, back brake is on the left, so, oh, yeah, good for like, popping wheelies, riding wheelies. I don't know if you'll be able to do that on this bike. So pedal assist three, give it a little bit of juice here. It's not a thrilling launch right here on pedal assist three. We'll bump it onto five here shortly. Almost every electric bicycle I review on this channel is a geared hub motor, which are in general better hill climbers and better for accelerating. They're more efficient for those things. Gearless hub motors, a direct drive hub motor like what's on this bike. These are known as speed motors. These are more efficient at high speeds and better cruising at high speeds. Also, generally, you can run a little bit more power into them. So this bike, they say, will peak out at 2,600 watts. I get the feeling it could do more than that. 60 volts on a full charge is 67 volts, and it's a 50 amp controller. So you multiply those two numbers, that should be your peak power in theory. Let's switch it from blue onto red mode here. Pedal assist four. Let's get on out here behind the Toyota Supra on pedal assist four, merging on into traffic here. What kind of speed will it take us up to? 27, blinkers on. We have blinkers too, bro. 34, and we'll get out the GPS and verify here. So we're only on pedal assist four doing 37. And as you can see, we're keeping up with the Prius here. We'll put on pedal assist five now. We don't have space and time to do it now. We'll do a top speed run here shortly. And man, these four piston hydraulic brakes are feeling much better than what I'm used to feeling. Which is good, because this thing should have some pretty high top speeds, right? So another benefit of gearless hub motors is they're generally a little bit quieter than geared hub motors. So we're gonna get into the settings here, change the start strength from three to five. So we should have full power now. And now let's test the zero to 20 acceleration. GPS on my left hand. As I said, gearless hub motors are generally better at speed than acceleration. Let's give it a try, weigh 200 pounds, ready, go. So it gives you all that power right away. Five, 10, 15. 20, 25, and I'm gonna light off for now. Speedometer appears to be pretty much accurate, so definitely a very quick accelerating electric bicycle. But honestly, that is not where direct drives shine. Direct drives are speed motors, so we're gonna try the top speed. This bike is gonna be more efficient uh, cruising at higher speeds than a geared hub motor. But speaking of efficiency, we're sitting at 89% right now. It's gonna be super interesting to see how the range pans out on this bike, because 60 volt 20 amp hour battery pack is a lot of juice, but this thing can draw a lot of juice too. All right, dude, it's time for a top speed. Speed run, I'm gonna whip this thing around. GPS in my left hand, pedal assist five, ready. Full throttle now. 20, 25, 30, 35. Come on cars, don't pull in front of me, please. 40. Slight tailwind, or maybe headwind, I don't know. 42, 43, 44, 42 on here. We might have to give that another run. <laughs> Need both brakes here. A lot of weight moving here. All right, one more run here. Please change the light. 35, I feel the wind hitting my chest. My wind resistance is like reducing. How much power this thing gets? 39, 40, 40 on the GPS, 44 on there, 41. We're still picking up speed though, dude. Holy crap, man, we are freaking flying. 45, wait, what? I better light off. This thing is ridiculously fast, man. All right, dudes, we gotta do one more high speed run spliced in the next day here. Oh, 39, there we go. Come on, let's make this light. I see it's about to change. 39, 39, come on. This is a speed motor, 40, dude, 40. I gotta get down, give it a little time. We're gonna hit a light. 42, 43. Man, we were just starting to get up there. So it's gonna start, you know, topping out basically about 44, 45. Depending on your weight, wind conditions, you might be able to get a little bit higher. Dude, this bike is freaking awesome. And considering the price, I mean, this has gotta be one of the best, better bang for the buck 
fastest electric bikes you can buy. But we are already sitting at 82% on the battery. We'll see where the range ends up. So again, high torque situations is not this bike's strong suit. We'll get out there in a few, but let's run up this hill here in the sand, see if I can do it. Oh yeah, dude. It's actually surprisingly torque for a gearless tub motor. I'll try the suspension in this uh, particularly harsh area here. Uh, it's all right. It's, it's not great, but it's not bad at all. I think this is gonna be a bike that you're gonna end up riding on the road more than off-roading, especially, you know, the tires are set up for street tires. However, I probably could get down there and uh, loosen it up a little bit. Oh yeah, I'm actually softening it up here. Let's see what that does. Go through this sand. Ooh. That's cool, dude. I find it getting nice on pedal assist too, just kind of full throttle in it here, just cruising along at about 17. But now we're gonna crank it up to pedal assist five. Get out here and see how it does on the sand. Now, like I was saying, direct drive motors generally aren't the greatest for high torque situations, but this bike does seem pretty freaking powerful. And we are on 4.5 inch wide tires. These are kind of more of like street tires than off-roading tires because they're not knobby, but this thing's actually doing pretty decent just cruising along out here. Uh, we are really going to be putting this battery to the test. It's doing pretty good out here, man. It's really not doing too bad. We're cruising at uh, 18 according to the onboard speedometer there. <laughs> man, I feel guilty out here just stressing this battery out. But this thing seems, uh, you know, once we're up to speed here, it's doing just fine. I wonder what happens if we like let the speed kind of reduce. Man, this thing's crushing it. It's really crushing it. I really didn't think it would do this great. I'm going to go ahead and just stop in the sand. Obviously, we would have made it. How will it do from a complete stop? Oh wow, it's taken off from a dead standstill in the sand. Not many bikes can do that. Pretty impressive. I'm gonna pop back out here and do some B-roll and have some fun. Is it the GOAT? This is kind of stupid. So let's see here, after about 10 miles of ride time out here, messing around, tearing up some holes in the sand, a few high speed runs, we're sitting at 76% remaining on the battery right now. And with all the crackdown on uh, Sarans and stuff, you know, a bike like this, you might be more likely to skate by the police, not getting in any sort of trouble or not. This thing does surprisingly well on the sand. I did not think this direct drive hub motor was gonna do so well cruising out here. Maybe it's the 4.5 inch wide tires that help it float over the sand a little better. Maybe it's just the raw power of 2,600 watts peak. Definitely don't think that riding through the sand was good for the brakes and the bike in general. And as always, well, this thing is actually pretty uh, nimble. I should mention that this bike is not like ideal for somebody who's trying to uh, exercise on a bike, you know, pedaling, especially for like a taller dude. Holy crap, dude, this thing just freaking goes so fast. My God. On these moped style electric bikes, you just don't really get the kind, same kind of uh, leg extension as like a normal bicycle, for a taller dude anyway. Although at the same time, I can kind of feel the weight of the direct drive hub motor. The overall mass of those mag wheels, they do weigh a little bit more than spoke wheels. However, you're not gonna have to worry about broken spoke ever. Oh gosh, looks like something's going down over here by the pier. All the wee woos out. So overall, pretty impressive power, but let's go ahead and run it up to the top of that cliff. See what kind of toll it takes on the battery and what kind of speed we can hit. It is a 12% grade, 85 foot climb. It's the California incline. Pop it on to pedal assist five for the loopy loop. See how it does it. We're not gonna pedal at all. Just throttle this thing around the corner. Full throttle, make the gap, make the gap. Oh yeah. And 10 miles an hour, 12 miles an hour. Perfectly torquey bike, this thing's uh, climbing hills way better than I thought it was going to. I know there are different torque windings for these hub drive motors. Not sure what torque winding this is. We'll test the brakes when we come down the California incline. Try not to crash into that wall. Full throttle from the stop here. 20, 23, 25, 26. Dominating the California incline. 20, 28, 30 and gaining. This is where I can tell this is like a high speed motor. It's still gaining. About to hit 30 miles an hour and we're gonna break. It absolutely decimated the California incline as expected. Starting to decimate that battery a little bit too under voltage sags showing 55 57 percent and just a moment ago we are right down there on that bike path a lot of sailboats out here let's head on down test out the brakes so whenever you have big power it's probably equally important if not more important that you have big brakes as well and that's exactly what this bike has 203 millimeter rotors four piston brakes that's 40 miles an hour we got a little bit of traffic jam barreling onto the wall here at about 26 miles an hour we're gonna go ahead and give them a pull right about now and Oh yeah, dang, these things grab good. One thing that is important to remember on this bike is the brakes are opposite of a bicycle. So when I went to pull on them there, I actually was uh, pulling on the wrong levers. Front brake is on the right 
and oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> Man, this thing just has absolutely no problem cruising in mid-20s. Let's give him an official test here for about 20 miles an hour. Go ahead and pull the brake levers right about now. Oh yeah, dude, these things put down the reverse power, the negative power, excellent. Huge rotors, four piston brakes they'll stop you. You get the added benefit of nice levers too. They just feel nice to squeeze. They're smooth. Linear braking force. I think it's all I can really ask for on a bike of this price. Uh, it just really depends on what you're looking for. Yeah, this one goes like 45. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> that can't be good for the tires. All right, dude, it's been out here for about 60 minutes, 13.43 miles. We're sitting at 58%. Let's head on home. See what kind of range we get out of this bike. I see why they call it a speed motor, dude. I'm just cruising, not even giving it all the juice, and we're just humming along 35 miles an hour. What in the freaking world is going on here? So final thoughts and price on the Billy Goat. I mean, dude, if you're looking for a fast electric bike at a reasonable price, this is an excellent option. Also, I do have an extra 10% discount code in the description box below this video. So if you're thinking about buying the Billy Goat, you can get the absolute best price and help support the channel by buying through the link and using my discount code below this video. In general, this bike is fast. It doesn't like accelerate super hard. Not to say that it accelerates slow, because it definitely accelerates fast it's just not as fast accelerating as a geared hub motor but you get the benefits of the direct drive which is speed and of course we're running on 60 volts which is just whoa whoa <laughs> i lost it there this is not on all-terrain tires these are street tires but 60 volts i mean dude how can you beat it all right dude's chilling at 34 percent battery let's see what it's got left in it full throttle here 15 miles an hour can we make that light up there 35 38 show 37 37 come on 38 battery's down to 16 percent still out here whipping in traffic <laughs> Oh my God, dude, this thing's so fast. 38, 39, 40, woo-hoo! Battery's gonna die, dude, 14%. All right, my dude's just rolling back into the neighborhood here. 21 miles, a little extra further than usual today. I was just having a good time on this bike. Showing 15%, it might go up here in just a minute, but it is, you know, pretty big battery. 60 volt, 20 amp hour is not a small battery by any means. However, when you have this much power on tap and you're running at higher speeds, you're gonna get a little less efficiency out of your battery due to wind resistance. And just in general, the faster you go, the less battery you're gonna get on any sort of electric vehicle. That in combination with this being a direct drive motor, they're a little bit less efficient when it comes to stop and go kind of riding hill climbing stuff riding on the sand so in those applications of a direct drive motor you're going to get a little bit less range all around the billy go is a bad to the bone bike i absolutely loved reviewing this bike if you do want to grab one buy through the link down below this video in the description box use my discount code use my coupon code at checkout as well as the link to help support the channel for the price of this bike i really do not think you can go wrong with this bike if this is the kind of style bike you want moped style full suspension 60 volt system i mean dude this thing rocks so if you're still watching this video right now just click the link buy the bike you'll be happy you did however if this is not the kind of bike for you watch this video next catch you over there so just out of curiosity what is 15 percent voltage readout according to them 55.9 volts so that's what you get either speed or range you can't have both